For many healthcare workers, giving vaccines is an everyday routine. For others, it is a new experience they are eager to master. They all want to administer each vaccine safely and competently. This program is intended to acquaint you with immunization techniques and best practices, along with published research and recommendations from doctors, nurses, and medical assistants who give immunizations to children, adolescents, and adults every day. This program is brought to you by the California Department of Public Health Immunization Branch and deals exclusively with the skills required for immunization administration only. As such, the content will be limited to techniques for intramuscular, subcutaneous, oral, and nasal administration routes. Many other up-to-date immunization resources, interactive learning modules, and the one-page reference sheets shown in this program are available on our website, eziz.org. This program will present you with valuable information, including important immunization basics, techniques for preparing and administering vaccines by intramuscular and subcutaneous injection routes, as well as oral and nasal administration, and personal skills for patient comfort and education, documentation, and staff safety and training. The demonstrations in this program are done without aspiration or gloves. There are no data to document the necessity of aspiration when giving vaccines, and OSHA does not require gloves when administering vaccines. The procedures in this program are based on best practices and may differ in some ways to those used at your office. Always follow the policies and procedures your office has established. If you have questions, ask your supervisor. There are basic steps involved in all vaccine preparations, which should be followed no matter which vaccine you will be working with. Prepare only what is on the doctor's written order. The doctor will write the order during patient screening and a review of the patient's immunization records. Prepare vaccines in a clean, quiet, and well-lit medication preparation area, and always wash your hands before you begin. Remember to scrub all the surfaces, including the backs of your hands, wrists, between fingers, and under your fingernails. Rinse well and use your towel to turn off the faucet. Doctors often use abbreviations and product names when they write orders. There are many vaccine products with similar sounding names. For example, TDAP vaccine is different from DTAP vaccine. It is important to know any abbreviations or brand names your office may use. Being familiar with product names and packaging is also important. Vaccines come in injectable, oral, and nasal preparations. Some vaccines are ready to use in single or multi-dose vials or in manufacturer-filled syringes. Other vaccines are freeze-dried and need to be reconstituted with a product-specific diluent before administration. Your vaccine preparation room should have supplies organized for easy access. Needles should be stored nearby in the sizes you will use depending on the injection route required. Intramuscular injections are generally given with a 1-inch, 23-25 to 25 gauge needle. The needle length makes sure that the injection deposits the vaccine in the muscle. Subcutaneous injections are given with a 5 8 inch, 25 gauge needle. The shorter needle ensures that the vaccine is deposited into the fatty layer under the skin. For infants younger than 28 days, a 5 8 inch needle can be used. And for heavier patients, you may need a 1 and a half inch needle. You may need to attach the needle to the syringe before you can use it on a patient. Finally, have the patient sit for a few minutes following their vaccine. You can use this time to update paperwork, to provide contact numbers should they have questions, and provide information about their next visit to your office. Most immunizations are injected. Injectable vaccine can be packaged in several ways, and you should be as confident drawing up vaccine from vials as you are preparing manufacturer-filled syringes. Here, we'll see how to draw up vaccine from a single-dose vial, with a note about multi-dose vials. Remove the vial from the refrigerator. Shake the vial to resuspend the vaccine. Inspect the vial, confirming the doctor's order, checking the expiration date, and looking for any discoloration, freezing, or damaged packaging. Never give a patient expired vaccine. If the vaccine is expired, label it clearly, do not use, notify your supervisor, and store it according to your office procedures until it can be returned or discarded. 
Remove the plastic cap, wipe the stopper of the vial with an alcohol pad, and let it dry. While the stopper is drying, remove the needle and syringe and carefully assemble them. Twist them together until you hear a distinct clicking. In this program, we are demonstrating only one type of safety engineered syringe. Know how to use the devices available in your office. At this point, uncap the needle. Hold the vial steady on the counter and insert the needle straight into the center of the vial stopper. Pick up the vial, invert it, and pull the needle back so the tip is in the liquid. Pull back on the plunger until you withdraw the entire contents of the single dose vial. Withdraw the needle from the vial. If there are any air bubbles in the barrel, tap it gently so the large bubbles move to the tip, then gently push them out, being careful not to expel the vaccine. Now, recap the needle using care to avoid contaminating it. At this point, the needle has not been used on a patient, so it can be recapped. When drawing up from a multi-dose vial, the steps of inspection and preparation are the same, from hand washing to wiping the vial stopper with an alcohol pad to setting up your needle and syringe while the vial stopper dries. With the multi-dose vial, it is important to avoid creating a vacuum in the vial as you withdraw vaccine by equalizing the pressure. To do this, pull back the syringe plunger equal to the amount of one dose of vaccine, which is usually half a cc. The air in the syringe barrel takes up the same amount of space as the vaccine you want to withdraw. Now, uncap the needle. Hold the vial steady on the counter and insert the needle straight into the center of the vial stopper and inject the air into the vaccine vial. Pick up the vial, invert it, and pull the needle back so the tip is in the liquid. Withdraw one dose of vaccine by pulling the barrel of the syringe back to the dose mark. Now, holding the needle and vial together, return both the needle and the vial to the countertop before withdrawing the needle from the vial. Clear the barrel of any air bubbles. Now, recap the needle using care to avoid contaminating it. At this point, the needle has not been used on a patient, so it can be recapped. As soon as you have drawn up the vaccine, recheck it against the doctor's order and label the syringe. Place the syringe on the tray and return the multi-dose vial to storage. Now the vaccine is ready to administer to your patient. Once an injectable vaccine has been drawn into a syringe, it is important to label it. You can use a pre-laminated tag or sticker on a silverware tray. It is also a good idea to place the empty vaccine vial next to the labeled syringe. Many injectable vaccines come ready to use in manufacturer-filled syringes. To prepare the syringes properly, first, remove the manufacturer-filled syringe from the refrigerator. Check the vaccine against the doctor's written order and check the expiration date. Because vaccines are suspensions, like salad dressings, and can separate, the syringe should be shaken. Manufacturer-filled syringes do not come packaged with an attached needle. You will need to attach one. Attach the needle by carefully threading it onto the syringe, then twisting it until it does not turn further. Do not uncap the needle until you are about to administer the vaccine. As soon as you have prepared the syringe, check it against the doctor's written order. Manufacturer-filled syringes come labeled. However, if your office uses a labeling system, you should follow your office protocol. With the labeling complete, now you are ready to administer the vaccine. Vaccines that are freeze-dried need to be reconstituted or dissolved by a product-specific diluent before they can be drawn up into a syringe. Only use the diluent provided by the manufacturer for that vaccine and reconstitute vaccines just before administration. Some reconstituted vaccines like MMR and varicella are sensitive, so don't let them sit out, warm up, or be exposed to light. Remove one dose of vaccine and its diluent from storage. Diluent can be stored at room temperature or in a refrigerator. Check the vaccine against the doctor's written order and check the expiration dates. Select a syringe and needle. Remove the plastic caps from the diluent and vaccine vials, 
Wipe the stoppers with an alcohol pad and let them dry. Assemble your needle and syringe. Uncap the needle. Hold the diluent vial steady on the counter. Insert the needle into the center of the vial stopper, invert the vial, and pull the needle back so the tip is in the liquid. Now withdraw all the diluent into the syringe. Withdraw the needle and clear the syringe of any air. Now hold the vaccine vial steady on the counter and insert the needle into the center of the stopper. Inject all the diluent. Holding the vial and syringe together, carefully shake the vial to mix it well. Now invert the vial and pull the needle back so the tip is in the liquid. Then pull back on the plunger to withdraw all the contents. Withdraw the needle. Clear the barrel of any bubbles. As soon as you have drawn up the vaccine, recap it, recheck it against the doctor's order, and label it. The vaccine is now ready to be administered to your patient. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Most vaccines are administered by the intramuscular route. Intramuscular, or IM injection, is the injection of vaccine directly into a muscle. Vaccine injected deep into muscle tissue is absorbed gradually. Intramuscular vaccines routinely use two muscles for injection, depending on the age and size of the patient. For infants and toddlers, the vastus lateralis on the anterior lateral thigh is preferred because of its relatively large muscle mass and its lack of major nerves and blood vessels. When a child stands and their arm is relaxed and hanging down, their middle finger dangles just over the vastus lateralis. Generally for patients older than two or three years, the deltoid of the upper arm is the preferred site for IM injections. The deltoid is located approximately three fingers below the acromion, the bony prominence at the top of the shoulder blade. Each patient is different, so before giving any injection, expose the limb and evaluate the muscle mass and where the needle should enter. Clean the injection site with an alcohol pad and let it dry. With your non-dominant hand, isolate the muscle. With your dominant hand, hold the syringe about an inch away from the site. Quickly insert the entire needle into the skin at a 90 degree angle. Push the plunger down using a smooth, steady motion and inject the contents of the syringe. Remove the needle and apply light pressure to the injection site. And immediately discard the syringe into a sharps container. If there is any bleeding, cover the injection site with a bandage. Subcutaneous immunizations, sometimes called sub-Q, are injected into the fatty tissue under the skin, not into the muscle. Subcutaneous injections are given with a 5 8 inch 25 gauge needle. MMR and varicella vaccines are administered by the subcutaneous route. The fatty tissue on the upper outer arm is the usual anatomic site for subcutaneous immunizations. Before administering the vaccine, expose the site and evaluate where the needle should enter. Clean the injection site with an alcohol pad and let it dry. With your non-dominant hand, pinch up some fatty tissue. And holding the syringe with your dominant hand, quickly insert the entire needle at a 45 degree angle. Push down on the plunger in a smooth, steady motion and inject the contents of the syringe. Remove the needle, enable the safety restraint, then immediately discard the syringe into a sharps container. Apply light pressure to the injection site with a sterile dressing. Finally, after administering the vaccines, have the patient sit for a few minutes. Rotavirus vaccine is given to infants by mouth instead of injection. Wash your hands and remove one dose from the refrigerator. Check it against the doctor's written order and check the expiration date before administering the vaccine to your patient. In the United States, there are two rotavirus vaccine products. Preparation for each is different, so check the package insert for detailed instructions. Before administering the vaccine, have the parent hold the baby securely and support the baby's head. Administer the dose into the infant's mouth against the cheek. If the baby spits up, it is not necessary to administer another dose. After administration, allow the parent to comfort the child while you discard the applicator in a sharps container. 
Live Attenuated Influenza Vaccine, or LAIV, is influenza vaccine misted into the nostrils instead of given as an injection. The vaccine comes in a pre-filled applicator. Check the package insert for detailed administration information. After washing your hands, remove one dose of the vaccine from the refrigerator. Check it against the doctor's written order and check the expiration date. Remove the rubber tip protector. With the patient sitting in an upright position, place the tip just inside the nostril. With a single motion, depress the plunger rapidly until the dose divider clip prevents you from going further. Pinch and remove the dose divider clip from the plunger. Place the applicator tip in the other nostril and repeat the same procedure. After administration, discard the applicator in a sharps container. Routine clinic visits are an important part of a program of wellness and immunization management, and you play a trusted role in forming, educating, and comforting patients and parents. Involving patients and parents in the process can be reassuring for them and helpful to you. Well child visits should be a regular part of every child's primary medical care. These visits help the parent and the provider assess developmental milestones and accommodate routine vaccines. They also provide an opportunity for patients to ask questions directly of the doctor. Parents and patients are exposed to a wide range of viewpoints on vaccines and vaccine safety, which can be confusing and in some cases unreliable. If necessary, suggest a special consultation appointment so there is adequate time to discuss their concerns. Prior to administering vaccines, give your patients vaccine information statements to make them aware of the benefits and risks of each vaccine. The VISs are available in many languages. You can download them from eziz.org. Always explain which vaccines will be given and where. You can use a site map to show parents where their child will receive immunizations. A site map like this can also help you and other providers get into a routine of injecting a particular vaccine in the same site and in the same order and helps you keep track of the required documentation. This job aid shows parents how they can hold and help comfort their child during the process. The site map, Comfort Measures Job Aid, and other materials seen in this program are available at eziz.org. Parents are often most comfortable holding their baby on their lap. Help wrap the child's arm around the parent's back under the parent's arm. The parent can control the child's other arm with their free hand. Help them anchor the child's feet and legs firmly between their thighs. During the immunizations, you can encourage parents to help distract their child with a favorite toy or by talking to them. Hearing a parent's voice can help reduce the child's distress. For kindergartners and older children, the parent can have the child stand in front of them. Have the parent embrace the child, wrapping their arms around the child and holding the child's legs firmly between theirs. Adults and adolescents can sit in a chair to receive their vaccination. Nobody likes shots. Distraction methods and comforting techniques can be helpful with patients of any age and can make the immunization process easier for the patient, the parent, and the person administering the shots. Many providers hang posters or artwork on the wall so older patients have something to focus on. A short period of observation is recommended, especially for adolescents and young adults. With infants, allow parents to comfort and soothe their children. At the end of the visit and before the patient leaves the office, make sure they have your office's telephone number so they can call if they have any reaction which concerns them. Also make sure to update their personal record and remind them of upcoming appointments. As the immunization provider, it is your responsibility to record specific information about each vaccine you administer. The patient's comprehensive immunization record should be kept at the front of their chart so it can be reviewed at each visit. These days, most providers participate in an immunization registry, an electronic immunization tracking and vaccine management system. In addition to saving staff time, immunization registries keep important information organized and easily accessible. Immunization registries also have special features that can automatically complete fields on the patient's chart and forecast their next immunization visit. Whether you document the patient's immunizations in a registry or manually in their chart, you must record certain information. For each vaccine you administer, indicate the date it was given, the type of vaccine, the dose, 
the vaccine manufacturer, its lot number and expiration date, plus your name and your professional initials. You must also indicate the vaccine site. Be familiar with the abbreviations your office uses. If you have questions, ask your supervisor. You are also required to record the issue date of the vaccine information statements that the patient was given. Immunization registries are programmed to automatically fill in the VIS dates. Once you record the information in the immunization registry, always print a hard copy and file it in the front of the patient's chart. And always update the patient's personal immunization record and remind them to bring it to every doctor visit. Hold regular all-staff meetings to review safety procedures for staff and patients as part of every office's meeting time and training. Maintaining effective staff communications and training is the best preparation to deal with any situation. It is important as part of your general discussion, product update, and policy review to consider several key procedures. Hand washing requirements, washing hands before and after patient care, Care to avoid needle stick injuries because of your close proximity to uncapped needles. Proper activation of safety mechanisms on all safety engineered syringes and the immediate use of sharps containers. Familiarity with the types of syringes used by your office and how to report an accident should one occur. Office policy should be reviewed with regard to glove use. Rare anaphylactic reactions to vaccines, including patient emergency response protocols and the importance of healthcare workers maintaining current CPR certification. These days, immunizations aren't just for babies anymore. They're for everyone. And everyone relies on you, your skills and your techniques to keep them healthy and to make every office visit as pleasant as possible. Whether you'll be administering vaccines in the vastus lateralis deltoid, oral or nasal, your confidence, rapport, smooth, firm technique and efficient follow-up will build a vital relationship of trust with your patient and mom or dad as well. Your skills extend to teaching parents the proper way to hold, soothe and comfort their child. As you reassure them, everything will be all right. Your patients, all sizes and ages, have one thing in common. They rely on your professionalism, proper technique, sincere rapport, and important and valuable information to ensure that their visit is complete. As a healthcare provider, your commitment to professional growth benefits you and everyone around you.